After all the speculation about who the top expansion candidates would be for the Big 12, we now have some answers. Four answers, to be specific, coming out of the Big 12 AD meeting earlier this week. You're going to find out who in just a moment here in this video. Welcome in. I'm John Kurtz here on this channel. I talk college football every single day. Right now, that means conference realignment every single day. I aim to give the Big 12 a voice when there is not much of one on the national scene. Okay, so we had a Big 12 AD meeting earlier this week. If you join my live chat on Wednesday, you heard a little bit as far as the details go on that. Also, if you were listening to Gene Taylor, K-State's athletic director, who was on the channel earlier this week, he gave you some insight into that. Now we have information coming from the athletic on the back end here in Max Olson. So he says BYU, UCF, Cincinnati, and Houston are the four schools that have been most seriously discussed and are considered the leading contenders in the Big 12 expansion picture. Now, BYU should not be surprising at all. That's been previously reported by The Athletic. We know that that's the one team that Big 12 officials have been told would actually add value to a TV contract. So it seems like a no-brainer at this point, even though there are some strings that come attached with BYU. UCF, to me, has always been another very strong contender and, and a no-brainer in my eyes. That's not really surprising at all either. Cincinnati, not only are they having success now with Luke Fickle, but if you look back at the last 15 years, they've had some really good coaches and some very good seasons, whether it's Brian Kelly, whether it's Mark D'Antonio, Butch Jones, even Tommy Tuberville had a couple of really nice seasons with Cincinnati. So I think there's plenty of football juice there. Houston is the interesting one. And that is in large part because of some hard feelings from 2016 when the Big 12 went through the expansion process or at least looked into expansion. They took resumes more or less from all these different schools. Houston, after not being chosen, said that they felt used. Big 12 is not a fan of those comments going out publicly. There's also the turmoil between other Texas schools in Houston, not wanting to let somebody else from the state in that could potentially take away valuable resources. But here's the bottom line, according to Max Olson's reporting. It says there's been more debate around Houston than the other three. The Big 12 had previously been reluctant to embrace the school as an expansion candidate. But one source said there now appears to be growing support for setting politics aside and accepting that inviting Houston is what's best for the conference's long-term strength. And that long-term strength is all tied into football because Max Olson also reports the Big 12 is looking at expansion with the intent to build as strong and compelling a football conference as it can. From that standpoint, these four schools are easy to justify as the top targets. He goes through some more information here, citing Cincy, Houston, UCF, all playing in New Year's Six Bowl games since 2015. BYU came close to reaching one last year when they went 11-1 and and finished 11th in the AP poll. Cincinnati is the highest-ranked Group of Five program in this year's preseason AP poll at number eight. So you lump all that together, these schools seem to be the strongest football-wise, according to the Big 12. We can debate the merits of all that. Certainly there are cases to be made for other schools, but this is legitimate reporting. Max Olson has been pretty tied into the Big 12 throughout this whole process, so I, I certainly put a lot of faith in in what he is saying here about these being the top four candidates right now. But even though four schools have been identified here as the leading candidates, by no means is this signed, sealed, and delivered right now. There are plenty of things that need to be worked out to figure out how this is going to work. From the article, if the athletic directors and presidents of the league's eight remaining members can reach a consensus on who to invite, sources believe it is possible that the process could move faster than initially anticipated. So, okay, that does give you some hope that it could happen, perhaps not way on down the line, but a little bit sooner. Uh, 180, though, said the conference is not trying to rush a decision and more homework is still needed on candidates and which additions bring the most value. So uh, kind of some conflicting reports in there, depending uh, apparently on who you talk to from the Big 12 right now. I still wouldn't imagine that this is anything that's going to happen tomorrow, next week, uh, maybe even next month. But we at least know now really what the Big 12 is thinking. And if they are thinking football predominantly, I do think the four schools that they've identified have very, very strong cases. Now, what about adding with Texas and Oklahoma still in the league? So, article says Texas and Oklahoma have agreed to join the SEC in the summer of 2025. Big 12 bylaws require members to give at least 18 months notice before withdrawing and a fee of two years of revenue distribution. That's expected to be around $80 million each. The two schools would need to give notice by the end of December if they want to join the SEC in the summer of 2023. So keep that date in mind as we roll through the college football season here. On the other side, Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston are members of the AAC, which requires 27 months notice. 27! 27. 27 months notice and a $10 million penalty for departing members. The conference agreed in 2019 to let UConn exit on 12 months notice in exchange for a $17 million exit fee. 
but the departure of this trio would be a much more significant loss for the conference. Yeah, based on the AAC's attitude right now, Mike Oresco, the fact that they were kind of a pawn in ESPN scheme and how they got tied into that and have been adversely pitted against Bob Bowlesby, I just, I would not imagine there being much wiggle room from the AAC on how all that would work. So that gives you a sense of like how far down the line this could be before it actually does happen. Even Texas and Oklahoma, we're talking about by the end of December, if they want to be out in 23, and then you've got 27 months on the AAC side of things, a lot to be worked out here. And this is, again, in large part why the Big 12 feels like in some ways it can be patient. But I, I do think in the end, the quicker that the decision is made and an invite is extended and you can get the ball rolling on that, the more it's going to help conference unity, the more it's going to help fan bases that have felt pretty stranded here over the last couple of months wondering what the future is going to be. So I'm all for due diligence, do your homework, all of that. But it's one of those like rush but don't hurry kind of situations. Like I, I, want, I want this to happen as fast as possible still at the same time. So do your due diligence, but don't drag your feet while doing it. Don't just waste time to waste time. We'll keep you updated on what's going on here on this channel. Everything I see, everything I hear, certainly you'll find that out. We're heading into football too, guys. It's going to be really exciting. And I hope to do a live chat with you all on Sunday night to recap the first weekend of Big 12 football. So stay tuned here. Follow me on Twitter, at JL Kurtz. I'm going to be in Arlington, man. I'll be hanging out at Jerry World this weekend for K-State and Stanford, covering that game. Very much looking forward to it. And you know I'm going to be watching everything else happening in the Big 12. So follow me on Twitter, at JL Kurtz. Follow me on TikTok, John Kurtz Show. I'm trying to get the TikTok started this weekend, okay? I know I keep saying that. I promise. I'm going to get some content up there. You can also follow me on Instagram, at John Kurtz Show. And I would really appreciate your support on those platforms as well. You guys have been awesome. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.